You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive video coverage of the Gen 15 event from Dallas. And I'm joined now by Kevin Vachon, who is Chief Operating Officer of the MEF. Kevin, good to see you on Telecom TV again. Great to be here. We can see behind us in the networking hall there's a, there's a lot of activity. We're midway through Gen 15. How is the event going down so far? We're getting great feedback. And I think you know one key point we've gotten thus far is that MEF's core messaging about the purposes of this event, the, the, the message we're taking to market is very much in line with the conference sessions with all of the major operators and service providers that are presenting here. Now, what, one of your key messages um, is the third network vision and strategy. Um, what exactly is that and how far are you progressing with it? Yes, yeah, so it's one of three key messages that we have here today. And really, it, the third network is defined as the you know, a next generation of network services. The first network being the ubiquitous internet. The second network being a private network, the business network. The third network combines the benefits of, the, of both and moves us in a direction towards more agile, orchestrated, on-demand network services. And as you say, um, this appears to be in alignment with, with what the, the audience here want, wants to hear. Um, how are you progressing with getting the message of the third network across? You know, what, what, what is the industry doing to support it? Well, it probably takes us back to the, the other two, two messages that I, that I mentioned. Firstly, the foundation for the third network is the, is the globalization of Carrier Ethernet 2.0. It is very much seen as the foundation upon which new innovation will be built. The, the market projections continue to show excellent growth, a huge upside on this market, so that's number one. Number two, as I mentioned, was the third network uh, uh, message. The third one is industry collaboration. We are working with you know, numerous different other standards development organizations, open source projects, and in fact, we even have a hackathon where there's API code being built on the spot here today. So those are the really three key elements of the conference we work we we hear a lot about open in this industry. Um, you've got a hackathon going on here, we've got open source, we've got open communities. What exactly does, does open mean in, 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 in our context? Well, in, in the context of you know, the MEF and the work we've done over many years, we've built specifications, largely paper-based specifications. And what open is enabling us to do is to take those specifications, bring them into a, you know, an NFV type environment, a virtual environment, using whatever sort of open source platforms that the operators choose to do so. So working with the open source community to take this work from paper into a virtualized reality. Is that a different kind of collaboration, working with the open source community to, to the traditional telecoms community? It's dramatically different, as a matter of fact, because uh, you, you have to, uh, you have to migrate from more traditional uh, you know, waterfall-based uh, specification development process to more agile, uh, software-oriented processes. At the same time, you can't uh, dismiss the benefits of the processes required to bring key specifications to market. You can't have uh, APIs out there in production that are standard without there being an associated specification, for example. What's the MEF's main message to, to the audience here at, at Gen15? What, what are you trying to get across? Well, I think, um, you know, obviously we continue to message the carrier ethernet market, uh, huge upside, a lot of new developments. Uh, I think we're just really excited with the, the, uh, the, rece the, the reception in the marketplace of our LSO initiative, which is a major portion of that third party vision, uh, third, third network vision. The, the, um, the LSO message has been taken out to market now for just under a year. It's had very, very broad acceptance. The analysts are starting to report on it. The service providers are starting to align their strategies with what we're doing, the other you know, open source projects and so on. So we're showing, we're trying to tell the industry that, that this is real, it's happening, and it's happening faster than we even expected. So what's next for the MEF? What, what, what should we be looking towards you for leadership on in the year to come? Well, I think what you're going to start to see are implementations, early implementations of LSO, particularly in, in proof of concepts, um, and, and just building out the code necessary for the various interfaces. So we're really going from uh, you know, a reference architecture to now implementations of that code, and we'll start to see early implementations showing up in service provider networks, maybe in the labs, maybe in proof of concepts that it will be showing up. So you mentioned the three messages you're conveying to the industry. Why is it that you think the, the evolution of carrier Ethernet 2.0 towards the third network is the way for telcos to go? Well, 
LSO is actually being driven by three different uh, factors. One is the overall volume of carrier Ethernet services are such that you require automation. Carriers need to require automation to be able to turn on services faster and reduce, reduce OPEX. Secondly, we're seeing a shift in the marketplace to more dynamic services from static. You can't do that without an automated orchestration capability. So on-demand and band, you know, on-demand services, customer portals and so on are driving LSO. The last one is cloud. Cloud applications require a very flexible and programmable connectivity fabric. So all of these things are coming together uh, probably at a very good time to drive the, you know, the introduction of LSO into the market. Great. Kevin, thank you very much indeed. Great, thanks very much.